Okay, so let's get back to this. So this is the continuation of 10.3. Uh, we have to use these graphs to answer the questions below. So there's questions here below. We need to figure out what f of g of 2 is and g of f of 4 is. Also, we down here, uh, we have to determine the value of x if f of g of x is equal to 3. All right, so those are the questions that we have to answer. But first, what I want to do is I want to go through this graph, and I just want to label, just note that g of 2, so this is the x value 2, it equals the y value is negative 1. For here, g of 1 is equal to 0. g of 0 is equal to 1. g of negative 1 over here is equal to 2. Uh, this is g of negative 2, that's equal to 0 and g of th negative 3 is equal to 2. Sorry, negative 2. Get that negative in there. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing for f of x. So f of, f of 4, when x is 4, y is 2. When, what about this? What is this here? This is f of 3, that's equal to 3. <coughs> this is going to be f of 2, that's equal to, oh, Hang on a second. I wrote down 3. I meant to write 2 over here, right? Yeah. Okay. So that's 2 and that's 2. So all of these values, <coughs> including this one, are all outputting a value of 2. Here we've got f of 0. That's equal to 3. This is f of negative 1 that's equal to 4, and f of negative 2 is equal to 5. Now, you don't necessarily have to do this when you're doing this question, but I thought it would be easier for you guys to follow along while I'm doing the question and, and kind of get a better, <coughs> clear view of where I'm getting these numbers from, okay? So the x values and the y values. So what is g of 2? So I could look on my graph and I say g of 2 is equal to Negative 1. All right, so this is negative 1. So then I need to figure out what f of negative 1 is. So what's negative f of negative 1? 4. Mm, yeah, it's 4 up here. All right, and is that it? Yes. It was that easy, folks. So f of g of 2 is equal to 4. Yeah. Awesome. <clears throat> All right. So now here, f of 4. Where can I find f of 4 and what is the y value? So f of 4 is equal to 2. two. So then I need to figure out what g of 2 is. So what's g of 2? On my graph, uh, here it is, negative 1. All right, so then I could say g of f of 4 is equal to, it would be nice if you could see what I'm writing, hey? negative 1. Cool? All right, so now we've got to work backwards for part C. We're given the y value, but we need to figure out what the uh, x value is. Okay, so basically, let's imagine that we have f of x, I don't know what that x is, uh, and that is equal to 3. So when does that happen? So let's first look at our graph. Where do I get f of x equals 3? So f of something equals 3. Hmm. Oh, so look, I've got it right here and there. So you notice there's two places where it happens? So you kind of make sure, make sure that you're looking at the entire graph and that you're looking at all possibilities. So I'm going to go back down here. And I'm going to say, well, it happens when x is equal to negative 4 and 0. Okay? So what I need to figure out now is since this is what, uh, in, instead of the x really, what, what should it be? G of x, right? So it's like f of g 
of x is equal to f of negative 4, right? So g of x is actually equal to negative 4. So when does that happen? Where, what is the x value? When does this happen? Okay. So, so x is equal to So where is g of x equal to negative 4? So let's look at our graph, and what do we see? I never get a y value of negative 4, do I? It stops here. OK. So then there is no solution for that part of it, right? OK, no solution. For the for for this part here, okay. Now, what's the other situation I need to look at? Look at look at g of x is equal to zero. So when does that happen? So let's go back to our graph. So g of x is equal to zero here and here. So it happens in two spots at which values of x? At x equals 1 and negative 2. So when x equals 1 and negative 2. So this is our solution for that. Okay? Sound good? Okay, awesome. Yeah. Okay, so the next question says, given f of x is a square root of x plus 3 and g of x is, a, is x squared minus 4, determine g of f of x and identify the domain. So let's have a look at g of f of x. What is f of x? So instead of f of x here, I'm going to write root x plus 3. Okay. Now let's uh, finish it off with writing what g of x is. So it's x squared. So now instead of x, what do I write in place of the x squared, the x here? So what goes right here? The square root of x plus 3. Okay, now I've got a square root getting squared. So what happens? All right, so that just becomes x plus 3 minus 4. So what is g of f of x is equal to x minus 1. All right, so now I need to look at the domain. So what is the domain here? So you need to consider, remember how we had the graph and, and sometimes uh, one of the functions didn't have the same domain as the other one or it was shorter and then we kind of had to stop in the middle of solving. We couldn't, we ended up getting a no solution for that first part of uh, the example on the other side. We need to consider that when we're doing the domain here. So let's look at the domain of f of x it's a square root of x plus 3. So what's the domain for this guy? So x is going to be greater than or equal to negative 3. All right. And what's the domain of g of x? You want me to write it in the other notation? So x is greater than. So for, for f of x, it should just be this, right? So you can write it like that. And then x squared minus 4. So the domain of this is 
x is an element of the reals. Or I can write negative infinity to positive infinity. Now, which is the smaller domain of the two? So the domain of g of f of x, for this, the domain is going to be the smaller of the two. So x is going to be greater than or equal to negative 3. It's not going to, it's not going to have, when I put the two together, there's a part that's going to end up having, it's, it's not going to exist, right? Because there's nothing to add on for any of the values that are beyond this domain to the g. Okay. You can also kind of draw yourself a little sketch. What is this, what is a, a little sketch of x squared minus 4? x squared minus 4 looks kind of like this, right? And then what does the square root of x plus 3 equal look like? Negative 3, and then it kind of goes like that, right? So when we, when we put these together, anything that goes beyond the negative 3 isn't going to exist for the combination of the two. Okay, so let's determine f of g of x and identify its domain. So f of x squared minus 4, and then that is going to give us the x squared minus 4 <coughs> underneath, sorry, where that x was, and then plus 3. So I can simplify this to be square root of x squared minus 1. So this is what f of g of x looks like. Okay. Now let's have a look at the domains for these guys. So we've already figured out the domain of them individually, right? <coughs> um, I can use, what's the domain for, what's the domain for x squared minus 1. Okay, now if I were to square root it, what would the domain of that be? This cannot, this cannot be a value that will give me a negative underneath the square root, right? What do we know about what this looks like? So you've got negative 1 or positive 1, <coughs> right? Because it's a square, this is squared, right? So if I put a negative value in here, it squares become positive. If I put a positive value here, it's still positive, okay? All right. So now let's have a look at the domain for my square root of x plus 3. So what can you tell me about this domain here? Okay, so this domain has to be greater than or equal to negative 3. And what is this domain? Just in, in the notation, what, what, what can we write it as? So we want it, it's going to be positive, negative, and positive, right? Because it's going like that. Um, yeah, so any values that are less than negative 1 will square out and give us a positive number under here. And any values that are greater than or equal to 1 are going to give us values that are legit. 
Now, we have to put all these together and figure out what the combination is going to work out to. So if I have negative 1 and 1, so let's say I've got the domain going for this one over here. And then if I were to put in the domain for this guy right here, so this is going to be negative 3 and greater than. Okay? Now, where do they overlap? That's what I want. I want the areas that they overlap. They overlap right from here to here. Okay? And they overlap from here and on. So what is the domain? How would I write that? This is between negative 3 and negative 1 square bracket, square bracket, and this is from 1 all the way up to infinity. All right? So you have to do a little bit more thinking around this one, just kind of setting it up, uh, getting your thoughts around it, and I'll write it in the other notation as well, just so you have it. Uh, X is greater than or equal to 1. All right? So this is the domain for f of g of x. Okay? And you really only need to state one of these. I, I mean, you only need to use one notation. You don't have to show me both of the notations. All right? So just again, you need to make sure you consider the domain of the inner function as well as the domain of the composite function, okay? Just to make sure that everything works out because you don't want any no solution situations to come out and bug you. You have to take everything into consideration. And beyond. And beyond. So, here's the homework. What do you have to do to make the homework happen? That, that sounded wrong. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Practice makes perfect, and you get perfect when you practice. All right, enjoy your homework, make it happen. There, good? Okay, awesome. Throw in that U at the last second. <laughs>